Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Foreign Minister Zbigniew Rao presented the key assumptions of Polish foreign policy to Parliament today. The three most important are ensuring peace and security, democratization of international relations based on the sovereign equality of all states and nations, and legalism, understood as adherence to international law. Foreign Minister Zbigniew Rao stressed that Russia's policy is a greater threat to peace in Europe. He pointed out that one of the most important principles guiding Polish foreign policy is to ensure peace and security. We consider ourselves the epicentre of important modern values that defend Europe from the power tendencies of the big countries, from slipping into compromises with authoritarianism. In his statement, Minister Zbigniew Rao pointed out the need to dissolve the Russia-NATO agreement and isolate Moscow more strongly. He added that Poland favours an ever closer alliance with the United States. We note with satisfaction that the experience of the Polish-American alliance is influencing the American position on Ukraine. Poland is among the top three countries, after the United States and the United Kingdom, that provide the most military aid to Ukraine relative to their own GDP. If anyone is able to provide security in this part of Europe, it is the superpower that has the largest army in the world today and has the greatest military potential, that is, the alliance with the United States. Earlier this year, the Polish government signed a contract worth $1.5 billion for the purchase of another batch of Abrams tanks. The first F-35 fighter jets have already entered the production line at the U.S. armaments plant. According to Politico, the war in Ukraine has changed the previous perception of Poland in the eyes of the West. Poland has become one of the Ukraine's most important allies, and access to its roads, railroads and airports is crucial for supplying Ukraine with weapons, ammunition and other aid. The idea of supporting Ukraine in its struggle against the Russian Federation is part of the idea of Prometheism. This political concept was initiated by Marshal Józef Pilsudski and put into practice by President Lech Kaczynski. Only by building a strong cooperation and security bloc can the Kremlin's imperial ambitions be resisted. Finland's accession to NATO was key to strengthening the security of the Baltic Sea region and Poland. I hope that Sweden will join soon at the Vilnius summit. At the moment, I think we need to revise a lot, not only the issue of the NATO-Soviet agreement, but also NATO in its very formula, to take a closer look at the defence doctrine. Another of the priorities of Polish diplomacy in the eastern part of Europe is to pursue an open-door policy to the European Union and NATO for Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia. It is crucial to move the spectre of war away from Poland's borders. The Bucharest 9 is so important that, for example, the President of the United States meets in this format. This year alone, the government will spend 4% of GDP on military and armaments. This is the highest percentage among all NATO countries. This is the possibility provided for by the Homeland Defence Law introduced last year. Poland aims to become the service centre for US-made Abrams tanks in Europe, Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said on Wednesday during a visit to the United States. Poland, a close ally of the United States within NATO, has ordered 250 new state-of-the-art Abrams battle tanks in addition to 116 modernised ones. Morawiecki said the first 14 Abrams m tanks would arrive in Poland by June and would enter service to replace post-Soviet vehicles donated to Ukraine to help fight off Russia's invasion. I want a service centre for Abrams tanks for the whole of Europe for maintaining their battle readiness to be located in Poland. This is possible. I am in talks regarding this. I also spoke about this with Madam Vice President so that Polish technical and engineering knowledge would be used to strengthen this Polish-American technical and military alliance. We are also striving for the production of depleted uranium ammunition cores for the Abrams to be located in Poland. I would like to say from here that I have confirmation that by June at the latest, 14 Abrams tanks will be delivered to Poland, which will enter battle formation where we need to have replacement tanks due to the fact that we have transferred old post-Soviet equipment to Ukraine. Poland has also ordered Lockheed Martin F-35 fighter jets and begun training pilots to use the aircraft, the first of which will arrive in 2024. On Tuesday, Poland's Defence Minister Mariusz Błaszczak met pilots who had completed the first step of their training to fly the F-35s and watched joint US-Polish exercises, including Abrams tanks, on Wednesday. Ukrainian forces have hung on for months in Bakhmut, where the fiercest fighting in Moscow's full-scale February 2022 invasion has killed thousands of soldiers. In an undisclosed location in the Donetsk region, a group of Ukrainian snipers held drills with sniper rifles, some using rifles provided by Western partners, to polish their marksmanship. 
Ukrainian armoured vehicles and a tank were seen driving on Wednesday across the town of Chasivyar in the eastern Donetsk region, less than 15 kilometres to the west of Bakhmut. Ukraine and Russia traded barbs on Wednesday over how much Kremlin's forces control the city of Bakhmut, for months a focal point of Moscow's bid to advance through eastern Ukraine. Ukraine's military said it controlled considerably more than 20% of the city. The claim by Russian entrepreneur Yevgeny Prigodzin that his Wagner mercenary group had seized more than 80% of Bakhmut was untrue, it said. Sniper Serhi who did not give his last name, told Reuters the situation where his unit is stationed is tough. Recently, we've mostly been working at night. During the day, they almost don't leave their dugouts. At night, the enemy gets food and water supplies or rotates troops. We use night vision goggles to catch them and shoot them at night. Yes, the distance is usually quite large, but we still manage. It's tough at the moment. On YouTube, you can hear that the AIM enemy has nothing left and is stuck, but actually, they fire a lot at us. They use their artillery a lot, their helicopters, their planes and their mortars, all directed towards us. I hope that it will be over someday and that the wheel counterattack, but right now, it is really difficult. We now hope that we'll counterattack. I think it will happen quite soon, next month maybe. I think we're not going now only because it's very muddy, clay is sticky, it's hard to advance and our vehicles are not able to move. The other reason is that the trees will all be green sown, so it'll be easier to attack because you're not that visible and can get closer to the enemy more easily. So, I hope that we will advance in the next month or so and maybe liberate Donetsk, who knows. Fighting rages on in the east and south of Ukraine where Russian forces hold swathes of territory. Ukraine is expected to launch a counteroffensive to seize back land in the south and east from Russian forces in the coming weeks or months. Ukraine wishes to secure advanced fighter jets such as the US F-16 from the west to help fight back Russian invaders and defend itself from airstrikes. On the occasion of the Katyn Massacre Remembrance Day, Polish President Andrzej Duda laid a wreath in front of the Katyn Epitaph at the Katyn Museum in Warsaw. As a result of a decision made by the Soviet authorities 83 years ago, some 22,000 Polish citizens the elite of the Second Polish Republic, were killed over two months. On September 17th, the Red Army attacked Poland, which was fighting the Germans. The Soviets took tens of thousands of Poles as prisoners. Joseph Stalin decided to murder the Polish elite. By a shot in the back of the head, Polish prisoners of war were killed in, among other places, Katyn, Kharkov and Miednoye. The Germans discovered the mass graves on April 11th, 1943. For years, the Soviets refused to acknowledge the crime and shifted the blame to the Nazis. The truth about Katyn was hidden and covered up. This was the lie on which this power was based, not coincidentally. It was only after 1990 that our allies revealed materials that clearly showed that this was a Soviet crime. Despite the scale of the Katyn massacre, the Russians concluded in 2005 that the murder of Polish prisoners of war was not genocide, but only a simple crime that was time-barred. The authorities of the Soviet Union and today the authorities of the Russian Federation have completed their investigation, if you can call it that, and do not want to release any material on the subject, let alone bear any responsibility. The Polish state faces a huge responsibility to make the truth about this crime interesting to young people, who, as researched by the Institute of National Remembrance indicates are becoming less and less interested in these events. Above all, these state institutions must want to talk about history and note that history is an important part of education and the formation of patriotic attitudes. It should not only be the goal of one education ministry, but also of other ministries. The Institute of National Remembrance, IPN, is an organization that strives to impart knowledge about Polish history. The Cutting Massacre is one of the topics at the ongoing Congress of National Remembrance. The Institute of National Remembrance was established in 1999. Its task is to study Poland's most recent and yet most difficult history. This is also a search for how Polish society is to survive, how this heritage is to be continued. On April 12th, the Institute of National Remembrance published a new edition of the Robel Archive, a document created at the behest of the Polish underground state that details the cutting massacre. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.